you know what? I, not really when you consider how good Bruce is as a coach. He's able to take uh, the strengths of any particular group of players and mold them pretty well. And I know they haven't had, you know, by net rankings or BPI or Ken Palm tough schedule before, but they're 18 2. And, you know, we were doing some comparative stuff the other, uh, just actually a few minutes ago. I was looking at stuff, you know, they're. They're far worse three-point shooting team, and they're not as reliant on it as they were last year. But they're also a better team three-point defense. They do one thing consistently well that they did last year, and they deny easy opportunities. So, uh, sort of a hallmark of Bruce's teams: they find a way, whatever the strength of that group of players is on offense, and then they're consistent in terms of playing hard and good on defense. So, um, I think when you lose the types of players that they lost last year, and the guys who can score quickly and in bunches and score threes. Um, you know, you might expect a bit of a step back, and I think some might argue that this is not as dangerous a team uh, because of that as it was last year, but they're still dangerous. They're still really good. And in a year when across the board, I, I think maybe teams are a little more pushed to the middle, uh, it could be an opportunity for another another really good run here. What about the, you excited about the atmosphere, just kind of oh, for game yeah. day, for the game and all that? Yeah, I think that's the, that's the biggest thing when you compare. Now, I've been here, I've called games in the new building here when I was doing SEC games. So I've seen it, but there wasn't the level of excitement uh, around it because it was pre, pre-Bruce. pre um, So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the energy in the building. We love going new places where they're really excited and we're hoping that there's a tremendous turnout. I, I heard uh, one of our guys who was here for the site survey said that they were asking about the all-time record crowd. We said, you might not want to deal with that because Kentucky put 22,000 in for game day. So they're not getting that unless they're going to tear down the building and add some more seats before tomorrow morning. But, um, you know, we'd love to see the place full and see it be loud and raucous and, uh, and show people what Auburn basketball is about. Now, we're, we're really excited about coming. You mentioned the rankings and stuff. You said Auburn hasn't played, obviously, the toughest schedule. Does, does the team need that win against a ranked opponent, that, I guess, signature win in the eyes of the voters, things like that? It's just not like football. Mm-hmm. I mean, now it will help in seeding, but look, if you if you put together an impressive uh, one-loss record in in the SEC, which might not be, you know, it's not the Big Ten this year or anything in basketball, but there's certainly some good teams. You can put together a good record, have some solid wins. They have good wins. They just don't necessarily have great wins. I don't know if Kentucky – you know, necessarily this year qualifies. It'd be a really good one for sure. Um, so I don't know if you worry as much about the voters and where you are in the polls as much as you are just putting together a good record, building, uh, building consistent wins, and trying to make your seed as you know, as good as it can be. What, what were they last year? Four or five, and went to final four. You know, so it's um, you know, it's not as important as it is. I don't think when you're dealing like with the college football playoff and needing to get in the top four in such a such a smaller field. You mentioned you've, you've called games here mm-hmm. four years ago, and you've obviously been here for football for college games. Mm-hmm. Did you ever expect that game day would be coming to Auburn Arena for a basketball game? <laughs> a little, you know what? A little surprised, but I remember when Bruce took the job and saying, we're going to get you guys here. And, uh, you know, that's one thing you probably ought not doubt him. He's not only a terrific coach, he is a, uh, a master salesman for his program, wherever that program has been. And you can't be a great salesman for a program if you're not an outstanding coach. And that, at its core, is what draws people. You have to win and play an entertaining brand of basketball. They do both those things. So I guess maybe if you consider it from an historical context, the answer would be yes. But when you take a step back from it and go, wait a minute, Bruce Pearl was going there with the force of that personality and charisma from that standpoint it's not it's not too surprising now as good as Bruce Pearl is he's only the second best coach in the building because I look behind me I see the great Joe Champy behind here who was who was kind enough to uh to let me be part of the old Joe Champy women's basketball show at uh, at channel three the coaching show yeah and he also taught me how to make stromboli which I've forgotten to do but uh (laughs) but no a lot of great friends here at Auburn and uh, Joe I might say you and Bruce are tied since he's been in the Final Four now, too. Time I, I think coach. he's a step above. Yeah, really? All right. He's All still right. active. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but no, he, he's done such a, a wonderful job here. And so, I guess from a historical standpoint, maybe we'd be a little surprised when you consider um, the force that he brings to a program. Not, not very surprised at all. Thank you, Reese. All right. Appreciate it, Reese. Thank